Alright, welcome back everybody, and welcome to part 32 of Final Fantasy VI Advance. Uh, when we last left off, we just picked up the Esper Odin, upgraded him to Raiden, murdered herself another dragon, and then got uh, the most broken relic in the game for our physical attackers. So, let's go ahead and get out of the ancient castle, and get back to uh, the surface world. Now, the thing about it is, with the Ancient Castle, you can actually come back here at any time. This is not a one-time encounter. So if you ever missed anything, you are more than welcome to get back. Or you are able to come back and uh, try again. Now, as you can see right now, Locke is rather game-breaking. Now, we've actually almost got Terra completely to that point as well. Um, once she learns quick, and there's one last piece of equipment we need to get for her. Alright, so now we're back in South Figaro, or now we're back at Figaro Island, which really doesn't have anything for us to do here, so we want to go back to Colin again, so that we can get back to our airship and go flying around for some other side quests. As you can see, um, oops. Every time you uh, ride Figaro Castle between the two continents now, uh, you will encounter the ancient castle. So like I said, if you missed anything, you can always go back. Alright, so we have gotten the Kolingen, and more specifically we have left, or we have gotten back to our airship. Now, let's go to, let's see, where do we want to go? Let's go to Triangle Island. Now, in the World of Balance, this island is home to the Intangir, which is the, it's basically a mini, it's basically a boss as a uh, random encounter. The Intangir is invisible, it absorbs all elements, and it, or it starts off invisible, it absorbs all eight, or all elements of magic, and when you wake it up, it casts an attack all spell called Meteor, and then puts itself back to sleep. So it is not a pleasant thing to encounter, but killing one gives you 10 AP, which is the only 10 AP monster in the world of balance. In the world of ruin, however, we encounter the Zone Eater. We actually want to do absolutely nothing. Well, uh, actually, we probably want to knock it around a little bit to get it to. That shouldn't kill it. I don't think it will. Or maybe it will. Okay. 
Never mind about that whole knocking it around a little bit, because the Zone Eater really isn't all that useful by itself. I mean, it's not it's not a good grinding. Uh, it's not a good choice for grinding. No, we want it for that effect, inhale. And we want it to inhale all of our party members. There's a reason for this. Alright, come on. There we go. As you can see, getting inhaled does not actually kill you. Um, you can ride that beam of light outside, but we actually want to go further in, because we are now inside of the Zone Eater. And there are a lot of very nice treasures inside the Zone Eater. You gotta watch out for those little green dudes because they knock you down here. But you do want to get knocked down at least once because there's some decent, or there's more specifically that upper chest we want to grab. There are no bosses in the Zone Eater, so you are free. So you don't have to worry about. Uh, encountering anything too, too strong. Most of the enemies in here are actually fairly weak and ordinary. Uh, there are a lot of zombie effects, though, so be warned about that. Like, most of the enemies in here are undead. But the Red Jacket is actually the most powerful armor that the two Figaro brothers can obtain. Well, that just happened. Yeah, you gotta be careful about zombie because it's not a it's not a pleasant sensation.
and all that stuff. Wow, I can't believe I actually made it across. Okay. There's a save point here. Use it. Because of what's coming up through this door. The ceiling crusher. If the ceiling crushes you, it is immediate game over. There are no... There's no go back to the beginning of the door, No, nothing like that. No, it is game over, do not pass go, do not collect $200. Fortunately, those are, that's as far as you need to go. Okay, and this is an easy enough puzzle. It's just jumping across the uh, jumping across the treasure chests. And you want to hit that switch so that you can get over here and get the chest. Which is another thunder shield in case you spent one on the storm dragon like I did. And our goal is right through this door. Yes, Gogo -Go is completely insane. He is basically saving the world because we're doing it. Because he's a mimic, and he mimes things, and is actually also one of the most broken characters in the game. I know I keep saying that about a lot of things, but no, I really mean it this time. Because um, Gogo -Go is unique. If you played Final Fantasy V, you'll be familiar with how uh, you'll kind of familiar with how Gogo -Go works because he works. Ex it's basically the Mimic class from Final Fantasy V. You can actually customize his uh, menu to choose what actions he can take. He always has the Mimic command, but you can choose if he, you want him to have the... Um, you can choose if you want him to be able to fight, if you want him to have the item command. He can also use the special keyword, or the, the keyword abilities of every character except for Terra's Trance and Gao's Leap. Everything else is fair game. You can do, um... Oh, that's bad. Uh, of course! Why would it not be Terra that gets phantom rushed? Oh, So he can also learn Savings Blitzes. Um, if you give him the magic command, he knows the spells of every character in that party. Um, Gogo cannot use Magicite, however, so you cannot uh, you cannot adjust his stats. Also, Gogo cannot um, Gogo does not have the ability to uncurse the Paladin Shield, and um, he's limited in what equipment he can actually wear. Uh, 
basically he he's restricted to the same type of mage equipment that Strago and Realm use. So he is not allowed to use the Merit Award, which kind of sucks because otherwise you could make some really broken loadouts with Gogo. Alright. But we have gotten the second special character, the first being Romaro. Let's go get our last party member. Um, when we, la we last remember it was Shadow. Our Shadow was left off in the Masa. Now you remember that one item in the that I told you to grab in the cave to develop the Ichigeki? This is where it comes into play. So let's go into the Dragon's Neck Coliseum. Hey look, it's that dumbass. Alright, now you want to make sure that you save before doing anything, or before coming in here. Because the way the Dragon's Next Coliseum works is that you can bet your items to try and upgrade them to better stuff. And yes, the Coliseum is also horrendously expensive in. Alright, so... Say, gee, I wonder who fights here in all black. Or I wonder who we know who fights in all black. Yes, we want to fight in the Colosseum. And we want to bet the Ichigeki. Hey, look who it is. It's our buddy Shadow. Um... Now, the problem with the... Uh, the problem with the Colosseum is that you do not get to choose how the character attacks. It is entirely random based on what they have in their repertoire. So, hope that you have, or hope that your characters are relatively smart. Or you can just one-shot them. Right. Because that just happened. And now Shadow has permanently rejoined the party. He will not leave. He has the Interceptor with him. So we have the gang all together again. The party is complete. As you can see, we have all 14 characters. Of course, we're sticking with the current party that we have. Right, there are a couple other things that we're going to do right before we head off for the night. So let's try running to the call or to the auction house one more time to see if they have that item. Because it, it was a basically, I was trying to hold off on going to the Coliseum until we got that one item. Because we need to bet that at the Coliseum. All right, so let's see. Oh, I don't have enough money to buy it. Okay, never mind. We're going to instead let's go searching for Doom Gaze. And like I said before, the last time we tried to go hunting for Doom Gaze, he is a random encounter. He will show up whenever he damn well pleases, whether or not you want him to. Or actually, you know what? One second thought. Let's see, how many guy armors do I have? Or guy gears? Ooh, 
The reason why I'm asking for that is because we want. To... Let's go kill us another dragon. Actually, if we encounter um, if we encounter Doom Gaze, then we encounter Doom Gaze. But we want to. Let's actually kill a dragon as our last task of the night. Because there are three dragons left, two of which are in Kepka's tower. And they're encountered as uh, save point guardians. The first thing we want to do is we want to actually go in here. Oh, we don't have kayak gears in here. Uh, whatever. That's fine. The three that we have are plenty. Um... Oh, he can't equip guy again. Okay, that's awkward. So we'll get from the red jacket. Hmm. Alright, so the reason why we want the Gaia gear is because the Gaia gear absorbs earth-based damage. And the dragon that we're going to go fight is the earth dragon, or dirt dragon. And of all places to be, it's right here at the, at the uh, opera house. So let's go kill us a dragon. Alright, let's see. Where is the Impressar? There he is. Yeah, if you go up here and take a look... There he is, right in the middle of the stage. Now, how do we get down to him, however? Well, that's what I'm about to show you. So, we gotta go all the way back over to the switch room from before. Past the panicking impresario, because we really don't care about him. Now you remember, this was the switch that unlocked the door. This is the switch we need to hit, however, because this drops us right onto the stage. Now let's fight us a dragon. Now all the Earth Dragon does is it uses, uh, it uses physical attacks, which has a fairly powerful physical attack, and it uses Quake, which is a incredibly powerful um, Earth-based attack that hits all characters, uh, heroes and enemies, um, or allies and enemies. Now, since we have Gaia Gear on three of our four characters, the Gaia Gear absorbs Earth, which Quake is an Earth-based attack, so it doesn't do anything to us. Actually, since Edgar can't absorb Earth, let's give... Where is doesn't have light. Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. The Earth Dragon's dead. Like I said, Terra's broken. Alright, so... That's going to be it for tonight. Uh, join me next Tuesday when we can pick up for part 33 and day 7 of Final Fantasy VI Advance, where we will pick up the last of the remaining couple espers before we start to take on the end game and go to Kefka's Tower. So, uh, see you then. Have a great night.